Hey, what is going on everyone? Vega here from Serpent X Tech. And in this video, I'm going to be further modifying this Caspa KS0 uh, that was so graciously provided by Coin Mining Central, uh, sponsor of today's video, but more on that in just a moment. We got some heat sinks here. We got some thermal glue or adhesive, and that's going to be needed for the VRMs that are in there towards the back, very hard to see. But we need to get, if we're going to use the firmware provided by T Swift and company, we're gonna to need to uh, add these heat sinks to those VRMs, but also we're gonna replace the thermal paste and the thermal pads on this thing to optimize its cooling. It's already got the fan mod on it. There's some grills you can buy from the meter box that I talked about in a different video. So it's already doing above the stock hash rate just because it has better thermals. We're just gonna further improve that and get it ready for a firmware modification provided by T-Swift. I'll have it link to their telegram down in the description. But first, let's, uh, let's go over what their recommendations are. And before we continue, a huge shout out to Coin Mining Central who helped us get our hands on the KS0 Pro. But if you're looking for Casper mining equipment, they got you covered, ranging from the Zero Pro all the way to the KS3, 3M, L, 2s, and 1s. Some of the older generation models have been phased out, so you're only going to be able to get those from the secondhand market. But if you're looking for ASIC mining equipment or just crypto mining equipment in general, Check out the new arrivals. They got everything from Bitmain, Ice River, What's Miner, so on and so forth. They'll be linked down in the description. And let's get right back into the video. All right, so now that we're here at the computer, I just want to make sure that you are understanding of the risk and everything. T Swift and company uh, state here that, you know, their testing phase and on the machines that they utilize internally, everything was stable. Everything was perfectly fine. However, the, due to inconsistencies in the Ice River manufacturing talents, particularly with internal MOSFETs, not every other test machine yielded similar results, right? So I might not be able to hit the same clocks and hash rate as Red Panda and vice versa, or you and I. So just understand, you know, it comes down to environmental differences, thermal differences, silicon lottery. You know, maybe the pick and place machine messed up that day when they were building your machine. Maybe the VRM or MOSFETs or the quality of the components just aren't the same. So there's a lot of inconsistencies or variables that, T-Swift cannot account for, and it's going to be up to you to understand the risk. The MOSFETs inside the machine need to be cooled if you're going to be running this firmware. Uh, most importantly, they are not liable for any potential damage to your hardware, all loss, loss of profits or uh, as a result of you modifying your firmware. This is all on you, so make sure you understand that before you proceed forward. I just want to get this machine ready to go for the firmware before i even apply the firmware and i've seen some people silly 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 neat i can't even say it be silly and apply the 260 giga hash firmware with no vrm uh heat sinks no nothing i already had the vrm uh heat sinks i already had the thermal uh paste or putty uh pads Ad ad adhesive glue i already have all that i usually keep that stuff on hand i already had the fan so it's an easy transition for me Make sure you understand that you're using this firmware at your own risk. And number three, they do want you to provide proof of, you know, that you have copper heat sinks for your machines. But, you know, just talk to them and everything will be fine. Uh, you will need to provide your MAC address because this firmware is locked per device. But now that that's all said, and I'll leave links to everything, including the components utilized, down in the description. Let's get down to tearing down the machine. All right, so to actually tear this thing down, I don't have to do too much. I'm gonna leave the fan on. This one's already zip tied to the side chassis. So I'm just gonna leave that bad boy on. But to take these fans off, it's just a connector right here. All I gotta do is pull that off. First, I wanna turn off the fans. I got it connected to a little heat sink right there. Turn off the machine, just pull the power out, which is right here. And then make sure that it powers down. We'll see the lights on the inside go off and then unplug it right here. And it's actually very simple to pull off. Uh, I just like to use two hands instead of one, just like that. You see the two prongs just plug in there. And so with the ethernet disconnected, I can now move around with this machine and right here. So right now all the weight is on that zip, on those zip ties and fans. Uh, so I'm gonna be careful, but here's the plate. So I already have the two side uh, uh, plates here that are four screws to that I already took them off so now all I got to deal with is six screws right here to take this plate off and that will give me more internal access disconnect the fans and go from there which of course has a warranty void sticker 
just again just understand your risk and what you're dealing with here my country I can fight the warranty void uh, if removed sticker but some places cannot now with those six screws removed you're gonna very carefully on one edge doesn't matter which side you do it on I usually go by the warranty sticker I'm gonna put my thumb on this outer shell right because this this whole this whole section right here is a plate I put my thumb right here and I lift up right so I'm lifting up you don't want to pull all the way up because the fans are connected but it's going to be a little bit hard to pull off because the thermal pad um, are holding in place or the thermal pads are holding in place but now we can lift this plate up and get access to the fan so we can actually set that plate to the side for right now and you can see the two four pin connections right there as well as the thermal pad as well that we can replace with better thermal pads i don't know what uh, the actual heat dissipation is of these and i'll get you some measurements here in just a second all right so now we can look a little bit deeper at this board i'll try to get uh, high quality pictures and put it on the discord server we can see a xilinx chip here that's probably helped control the actual cores doing all the work Here's some of the MOSFETs, so we want to get heat sinks on these four right here. Uh, there's some pictures also provided in the Telegram by T-Swift. And it looks like to get to the other side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. And that side is going to be a little bit hard to pull off as well. I'm not sure if they're using thermal pads on this side or if it's thermal putty. Um, some people get different, uh, different ones depending on uh, you know which content creator I saw tear theirs down. I'm betting it's thermal paste or thermal pads and we'll probably replace that as well. Let's continue going a little bit deeper. Remove these eight screws. And by the way, the thermal pad up top, there's your measurement right there, okay? For the top thermal pads right here in gray. So I wanted to see something really quick. So I tried the taller heat sinks rather than these, which are six by six by nine millimeters, I wanna say. Uh, let me make, actually confirm that. Yeah, so six by six by three millimeters is what these smaller ones are. And I wanted to try these taller ones, which, you know, obviously have one more surface area, but also they're 6.5 by 6.5 by 12 millimeters high. And if you look very carefully in there, it does clear. It does make the clearance. And I'll try to zoom in. Um, and it should work on that far one, but I am not sure about the other ones. As long as it doesn't hit that fan in there, if you look very carefully, we should be good. And because it's taller than the chokes right behind it, that should help out with uh, thermal dissipation or cooling those VRMs a little bit better than these six by six uh, by threes. So let's see. So now I'm gonna take the thermal adhesive or thermal glue Got to poke it with the cap, right? Just like you would, uh, you know, if you're working with silicon or anything like that. And I'm gonna put some on the bottom of each heat sink. I don't think you need a lot. They did give us a spatula that we can use. A little clear spatula. So I'm just gonna spread that on ever so gently. A little bit extra on that on this one, but it's okay. And then I'm going to set it on there. Give it some time to actually adhere. I want to make sure you're covering the whole chip. And make sure there's no clearance issues. I want it exactly the way I got it. And kind of do the same thing. So you don't need a lot. Just that first initial opening of this particular guy just kind of splooged all over the place. That'd be a little bit extra there, but it's okay. And now I'm going to let that set and harden or, you know, get tacky because I don't want to accidentally hit one of them while trying to put this side cover back on. And we should be good to go. So the VRMs, those are the four that you want to put a heat sink on. You could try, you know, your thermal putty. Um, you could try thermal paste if it's tacky enough and, and will hold the heat sink still. 
uh, I like thermal tape or thermal adhesive. Uh, and then we want to replace, we could, or we want to replace the thermal pads on the back side, and of course the thermal pads where the chips are, which are right under here. Uh, so we'll tackle that after everything sets. And now sure. we can remove this PCB. We can lift it up. There's going to be some thermal paste on six chips when you lift up. So just lift ever so carefully from either side. You're going to feel a little bit of resistance. And there we go. And you can see the thermal paste. And what I mean by six chips, six chips on either side. So there's 12 total that you see this covering with thermal paste. Just make sure you replace that thermal paste. Don't forget where they are. And don't forget the position of where you place the PCB, right? So the fan headers are up there. That's where the warranty sticker is. Try to line it up with the holes when you go to put it back in. You'll see the holes right there. And to make sure these heat sinks, you know, didn't move after I got done installing them, I used a little bit of heat gun and measured the temperature with a, a thermal gun and then a little bit of the cold air to really let it sink in. And now the heat sinks are not moving anywhere. The adhesive is good. So now we just need to replace the thermal pads and the thermal paste. So I'm just gonna clean that off with uh, some paper towels and rubbing alcohol and then put some Thermal Grizzly Cryo Knot on each of these chips and try to find a thermal pad uh, to replace these guys right here. Just FYI, this thermal paste is really cheap. Really cheap. So replacing it is probably the best thing you could do for this machine. Actually, this thermal paste might not be as bad as I thought, but if you look very carefully, there will be the chips. Again, I'll try to take high resolution photos um, the thermal paste is kind of like a peach color. It reminds me of the thermal putty that was on my Asus laptop. And something I learned really quick is don't wipe down, wipe across. You see these silver rows, wipe across. And that thermal paste or putty is gonna really get in there. So I'm using the iFixit kit to kind of very carefully without breaking or ripping off any of the SMDs. Um, I'm trying to remove as much as possible before I go in there with rubbing alcohol, which we're about to do now. All right, so not exactly my cleanest job, but we got the thermal paste on there. This is the Thermal Grizzly Crown Knot Extreme, probably the best thermal paste out there. There's a few others that compete with it, and I could have done a better job, but all good. Just laid it on there with the spatula, replaced the thermal pads. Now time to put this back together. And then in the next video, we're gonna be installing the firmware from uh, T-Swift, the one that's provided. We're gonna start off small, maybe not do the 360 giga hash or 340 giga hash one, but we just have to wait and see. Check out the high res images, um, gonna be posted in the Discord for anybody looking to uh, take a, a deeper peek at the board. But now we are good to go. So we just simply need to put this bad boy back together. Remember to line up with the holes that you have here, right? I have it upside down on purpose, but I'm just trying to show you the orientation of the hose, holes. And then um, screw it back together, replace the thermal pads, and then I am done for the evening. I'll bring you guys back for another update as soon as I can. Uh, but the most important thing is just making sure we have adequate cooling to support the firmware before we install the firmware. But that's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We have completely modified this thing. We have uh, heat sinks on the uh, MOSFETs to help keep those guys extra cool. Uh, we have better than what's recommended uh, on here and I'll link to everything down below. We got probably the best thermal paste we can for the chips and then we have adequate cooling or what is actually the recommended cooling for the KS0 Pro if you're gonna modify the firmware. Check out some of my other videos uh, where I talk about some of the options to modifying your KS0, KS0 Pro. Just a quick FYI, the screws that actually hold this PCB down to the actual frame um, are spring retention. And so just like working on a GPU, you wanna do a cross hatch pattern uh, I like to start from the center and actually feels like when they did this from the factory, this screw and this screw were really tight compared to the others. So I'm going to start from the center, work my way out, cross hatch, tying everything down. And by the way, the thermal pad recommended on T-Swift's uh, Telegram is actually 1.5 millimeter 
whereas I measured this one at maybe 0.5, but maybe uh, the, you know, because thermal pads are a little bit more pliant, maybe the extra uh, size, the thickness will make it squish out because you see how much wider the gold contact section is compared to the thermal pad on some areas. Like you can actually see the gold. This one didn't squish out all the way, but this side or in the middle did. So it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit thicker uh, to help improve your cooling. And do me a favor on the way out, hit the like button, make sure to get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one where we actually install the firmware on this one. Take care.